All right, welcome back, everyone. I am the Dungeon Master. We are rejoining the party of Dragons of the Frozen Seas. Uh, today, a new party member is going to be fully joining us. He made a surprise appearance at the end of the last session, but uh, we were kind of rushed, so I'm going to kind of recap and give a little insight as to what's going on with him and we're going to go from there so as you guys were fighting these frost spiders and the frost spider queen who seemed to be made out of pure ice you guys found an ice crystal and when you guys got too close, the power inside the crystal began to glow and sparks of cold energy shot out and zapped everyone. And the crystal split open and inside was a man who seemed to be partially made out of ice. And a beast that seemed to be completely made out of ice. And this beast had huge, massive uh, paws that ended in icy spikes. Jagged spikes that looked like they could cause bleeding damage. And as... This partially covered in frost this, armor. Yes, and as these beings step forth out of this icy crystal, you can <clears throat> see that he's a little disoriented. He he's not quite sure exactly what has transpired. He is a being from another dimension, another realm, Niflhelm. <clears throat> and in this dark, icy place that he comes from, he is not used to, um, you know, th this warmth here on this, on this, Plane, even though you guys are freezing. Yes. Yes. Often around the campfire, you guys have told stories of Niflhelm and the poor souls that end up there wandering around in eternal darkness, unable to see, freezing from temperatures that are just, you know, like I said, this place is too warm for Norori. Uh, he, he comes here and he's just not used to this and he, he doesn't exactly understand what just happened or where he is because for all intents and purposes, this could be an all new time. This is an all new plane. It might be a parallel reality. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. And, you know, so it's very disorienting. It's like picking up a caveman and dropping him into Star Trek or, you know, something like that. Not that not that Norori is is like a caveman. He has his own complex society in Niflhelm with the Gensai and the elementals and and all of that. You know, they have their own uh, forms of civilization. Yeah. But now that he's here on the material plane, he's just completely disoriented. And on top of that, like he doesn't remember buying a ticket to the material plane. Like, why is he here? What's going on? He's not quite sure. But, but Norori, Nor you occasionally have flashes of like Niflhelm and what was happening 
leading up to uh, to to you um, being sent here. As Norori sort of like stri- cracks his neck and just sort of like looks around at the area, he sort of like sort of like wipes his forehead like he's sweating and just like, why is this place so hot? Indeed, and as as your your forehead, you know, as you go to wipe it, you can actually see little tiny ice crystals forming on your forehead. It's sweat that freezes instantly in not only this temperature, but your body is colder than the air. <sighs> and what am I doing in a cave? I swear that place was was tight. Ugh. And as I'm talking about this, my Elion is just walking around, just like sort of scanning the area, sort of like as like some sort of sentry. Yes, your Eidolon, oh, yeah. which um, you're free to name if you if you wish to name it, but I I didn't want to assume anything and give it a name or anything, so. Uh, your your Eidolon is mute, but upon seeing strangers, his icy armor thickens slightly and grows a couple of extra spikes along the shoulder, and he stares them down and just kind of walks around a perimeter looking at everything and making sure that he knows who's where. And then as this is going on, Scotty indeed is channeling her uh, shamanistic communing with um, the powers that be, and uh, she she uses her magic to channel healing power. But as she does so, suddenly the icy crystal shoots out another beam of cold. And Scotty, you're able to like, you know how those plasma balls, those electric balls like have the uh, static electricity beam that if you touch it, it like all concentrates on your on your finger or hand or whatever. So as as you're as you're doing that, um, you you hold out your hand and the beams of cold like all kind of arc and focus into you and you can tell that it is giving you a cold boosted power to where everybody gains resistance to cold 10 so now everybody has resist cold 10 that got affected by your channel and um anybody who has the cold subtype which is your father coltanen and um who else has the cold subtype oh uh i believe eric does now as well and what cold subtype and i already have resistance five percent yeah so that gets bumped up to ten and I think you might oh, have the, the 10 or 15. oh no you're the you're the 10 and I already have five yes no it just goes up to 10 and uh also Narori has the cold subtype and yeah that's right you're not a cold sorceress you're a star sorceress so yeah I don't think anybody else has the cold subtype but Kultanen does um and Scotty now uh you gain the cold subtype for your healing spells. All of your healing spells have the cold um, modifier to them now. And so whenever you heal somebody, they feel a chill. And um, it, it provides extra uh, resistance to cold. 
and inflammatory relief a little bit more. But if you're willing, your eyes now have a like ice crystal snowflake type of pattern to the iris. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, cool. I mean, you know, I I don't want to take away your player autonomy, but so we're not that. Um, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, 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 it's okay. You know, I just. I, I wanted to make sure because, like, I mean, eye color and, and all of that, like, some, some people have specific ideas, you know? Like, I mean, if I was Raceland, I wouldn't want anybody messing with my stuff. So, yeah, you know, I get it. But, uh, anyway, uh, as Scotty does that, Norori, you can feel the icy power coming off of her, and that's like instantly taking you back to like you know sitting on the porch and eating ice pie and and drinking iced tea and you know just being at home yeah yeah did everybody remember to take damage at the end of the end of the last session right you guys you guys got all kinds of messed up I think that one guy's dead. Or he was dying from the poison or something. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. He was going into anaphylactic shock and you guys saved him. Okay, I can take that dying thing off of him. Norori sees the strangers. Sees, El sees his Eladon sort of reacting to I don't the strangers. And he says looks over and just is sort of surprised. Now that's a lot of mortals. And what are they doing with those things? Now he's going to be he speaking he's going to be speaking in elemental so you guys might not understand him at first. Yeah. Um can I roll a sense motive? Sure. Absolutely. The demon. <laughs> what did you just call me? All right, so Eric you are in tune with the natural world and as such you don't quite speak elemental but it's like it's like being a uh, a wolf whisperer and like you know you don't speak wolf but you can you can you know communicate with them through non-verbal means and all of that and so the elemental you can understand his tone and you're able to, like, use a tone using your druidic language. And the druidic language is based enough on the elemental language that the, that the Gensai is able to understand a few basic words about, you know, you guys are, are not uh a threat and you know that uh you you hope that you can be friends and you know so like even though you're not able to communicate communicate right off the bat you're able to like get the gist of it out okay eric says uh i don't think he means us any harm i don't know what he's doing here, but uh, if he were going to do something, I think he would have already done it. So. Oh, and Scotty. Uh, I don't think he means. 
Scotty, you understand the word Niflhelm, and uh, if you start to speak to him in giant, um, isn't that one of your languages, uh, Narori? Indeed. It's like, ah, someone of the giant tongue. Yeah, let me say, Eric's, Eric's uh, assessment checks with what, uh, with what Scotty says, so she feels more at ease. Say. All right. All right. Well, since he doesn't mean us any harm, I think we should get back to fighting these spiders, don't y'all? I'm pretty sure the blast either scared him away or killed him. Uh, yeah. Once you guys killed the queen, like, the rest of them were not enough of a threat to, like, warrant an actual combat. Like, occasionally one might get close and you guys just kind of, you know, mess it up. Did we kill the queen or did she run away? I thought she just ran away. We never Uh, killed the queen. Well, we killed it. I, uh, slammed it against the wall and, uh, then the next attack killed it. Uh, Yeah, she's quite dead. Nori sort of walks up to the group and just sort of gives a smile. So, it's it's quite interesting to see you mortals up close. It's not often that that an elemental like I I appear here. As he smiles, you see a row of icy teeth, some of them quite sharp. Life in Niflhelm is a fight for survival, and it is quite different from here on the mortal plane. And so his appearance is quite fearsome compared to what you would find here on the mortal realm. Scotty, can you understand what this guy is saying? Are you sure it's not a demon, Eric? Well, if he was going to attack us, I think he already would have. I can say that. An annoyed look as the guy who said that he was a demon just sort of an annoyed look, and the other one just sort of like tenses up in anger. So, Scotty will speak up in both giantish and our common language, and will translate freely between. And she'll speak to, she'll say, let's be friends. And that's her own words, let's be friends. And then she'll just translate anything anyone wants to say, seemingly, so you can speak to each other with her in the middle as translator. But that's filtered out of the uh, live stream. Go. What, uh, I ask, what, what, is, uh, what is your name and uh, what are you doing here? My name is Norori, son of the winds. And as I am doing what I'm doing here, I am not certain. But I do have these flashes to what might be hints. Though, again, I am uncertain. You did just come out of a spider's ass. Yeah, I came out of a spider's arse. I came out of that crystal over there. Which was shoved up the spider's ass that we just killed, right? No. No, damn it. Makes for a good story, though. He sort of, Norari sort of just gives a confused look as he mentions spider's ass and just like, what's a spider? A spider? It's that thing that's behind you dead. That's a spider. And then Eric points to the spider coin. Oh, oh. Uh, ugh. Pretty big. Looks like it's covered in frost. But nothing of Niflheim's origins. <laughs> Though I don't know exactly. Anyways, I suppose you're here for some reason. We came to, uh... Hey! Uh, hey! Uh, shut! This... This... B... 
being cannot be trusted to be told everything about what we're doing here. I'm in charge around here, unless one of you wants to challenge me for rulership of the clan. Huh, daughter? Huh? You like getting pushed around? Huh? And what is it that you propose, then? I propose that, like, if he wants to come with, we keep an eye on him and that you guys shut your mouths. All right. Eh, why not? My, that's, you're a big one, as he looks to Coltanin. Yeah, Coltanin Karhu, the golden bear leader of the Algrundian tribes is a massive, like, Shaquille O'Neal-sized man who uh, is heavily muscled and wears the head and antlers of a giant elk that he killed as a small boy on his head. He's worn that since he was a small boy. He has a large, flowing, golden beard that he keeps in a heavy, thick braid, and... He speaks with a deep, booming voice, uh, and, uh, like, you know, he's he's used to being in charge because he's so big and strong and nobody challenges him. So, like, when you guys start, like, you know, telling him what's what, he gets really, like, flustered and angry. (gasps) Should we explore suppose... the rest of this cave? I suppose I'll be joining you then. If you're not going to tell me, I, I'll i just join you. Yeah, my guards will keep an eye on you. As he sort of... Don't worry, I mean no harm, I need no harm. I'll be the judge of that. How do you know I don't mean you harm? If you meant me harm, I suppose my air gun would would bash your skull in. I'm gonna let that one slide. He he's feeling he's feeling magnanimous after having been reunited with his daughter and and all of that. So. Nori just sighs as he sort of, like, accepts the fact that he's going to be watched. All right, so, uh, what do you guys want to do? I think it'd be a good idea for us to take a short rest after that battle. I want to explore the rest of the cave. We might... Find some traces of what we're looking for. A lot of us are pretty beat up after after everything. Vitor starts climbing up on top of you as you sit up alongside the wall, waiting for everybody to to decide what they're going to do. He looks up at you and rolls over, asking for the belly rubs that he gets before you guys fall asleep. Uh, Vitor wants to rest too, Eric says as he rubs Vitor's belly. Vitor starts snoring with his eyes open. This is not a place for resting. Well, we should get to a place to rest then. All right, I guess I'm going to start uh, scouting. Oh, did everybody add their, um, uh, what did you get? Eight eight wounds and 16 vigor? I did not. In damage or in healing? What? 
We didn't have any damage or healing. Yeah, you get eight wounds and 16 vigor back from Scotty channeling. Oh, I didn't hear her say that. How much vigor? 16? Yep. Oh, that actually helps a good bit. All right. Uh, Shall we scout ahead and try to find a clearing up ahead large enough to rest in? Never float your boat, mortal. You know, is it just me or is there something in the way he keeps saying mortal? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I've just chosen to ignore it, but it's starting to get. Suspicious. I've already said he's a demon, so. I'm going to take a closer look at the crystal he emerged from. Okay, it's split in half now, and it's still spitting out some energy. As you get closer, it seems to be drawn to you a little bit, and it starts zapping closer and closer to you. I'm going to back away. Yeah, so from a distance, it, it looks like um, a quartz crystal, but like also like it's made out of ice. Jellybee's going to stare at it and see if she can learn to understand it any. You can roll for Arcana, Knowledge Arcana. So, you don't know enough to, like, really recall and be able to explain it, but player knowledge for you guys, uh, what she's failing to recall is that occasionally the elemental plane of chaos, the, um... The realm where all of the various elements are, you know, just roiling and all of that overlaps with our own dimension and occasionally uh, particularly strong points will pierce the veil and um, this is likely one of those spots where the elemental plane of ice is particularly close to the material plane and uh, it pierced through how um, Norori came to, you know, be inside it and all of that is, is still unknown. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so I just don't recall anything other than crystal from another plane yeah yeah like? yeah you're like it, it's it's from the elemental plane of ice but like i don't know much more you can't really like you you it's one of those things where like you can half recall it but you can't like really explain it to anybody you know okay i'm gonna tell Coltanen that the raised uh, area ahead might be a good place for us to take a short break there's a small passageway tunnel that I want to check out before we go down it. Yeah, sounds good to me, Eric said.
and I'm going to very cautiously go into that area and make lots of perception checks. Okay. Uh, you see icy walls and it appears as though something had been, you know, tunneling here, but it hasn't made much progress. I'm going <clears> to <throat> grab Scotty, point it out to Scotty and Jillity as she comes up, and then uh, I guess I'll start looking elsewhere after we talk about it. Eric's going to roll a survival check to see if he can determine what it was that was tunneling. It, that would be knowledge nature. <laughs> knowledge nature, then. Hmm. Alright, so... Um, as you are uh, looking at the tunnel you know that spiders sometimes burrow in like loose silica you know stuff like that but to burrow through solid rock and ice takes some pretty um sharp claws and there's only one thing that you know of that like could dig through solid rock like this but you've never heard of any of them living in a cold environment it's the arumbrox the six legged or eight legged golden furred uh wolverine like creature that eats minerals such as gold and digs incessantly for them um but you've never heard of one living this far north so you don't know What's going on with that? I convey that uh, this could only be done by an Arumbarox. I tell pretty much all of that to the party. Uh, I'm going to whisper quietly uh, that uh, so, Ice Demon's friend looks like it has pretty big claws. Tell us what that is. That. Can Sorry, we be friends with it? Says, I am not a demon. I am Genasi. All right, uh, I'm going to roll a survival check and see if there's any tracks around. Uh, let's see if I can tell how recent this tunnel was made. Yeah. You going to get me to help you with that, Eric? Apparently you don't need it. I think he's got it. Yeah, so Eric, as you're looking, you can tell that this tunnel was dug like recently and that whatever is digging it is probably going to be back it's still actively digging it yeah uh these this tunnel was dug recently i say to everyone everyone i don't know that we should stay in this cave i think right, or if we're going smart. to stay in the cave we need to finish what we're doing quickly and get out of here what was that, Scotty? Uh, just suggesting we get out of here quick then. Unless, well, what is it we need to do here? No, we're not doing anything here. We, we came in looking for a place to rest. Well, I don't think this is it. I think we need to find somewhere else. Oh, really? The spider-infested cave with a monster tunneling through it and a glowing ice crystal that half froze us to death isn't where we should rest. Any other brilliant insights? Should I just hand my chieftain's crown over to you right away? Or would I be allowed to lead my people still? Well, I'm merely... This is merely my 
advice. I mean, of course you're leading your people here. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, you'll find that, like, Kultanen is one of those guys who, like, yeah, he he likes to make sure that everybody knows that he's in charge, but, like, sometimes you got to kind of, like, be like, oh, maybe we should do this, and then he's like, I'll say what we do, which is that thing you just said. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. I'll save you some. I'll save you um, some trouble. That that path leads to uh, the the entrance again. It's just a a back way. Okay. Does it look like it's been tunneled? Uh, no. This is a natural cave. Just that other area was carved with claws. That's okay. I'd rather see the map. Well, if you guys want to, you know, really go f wake up the Arumvarax, I guess we could do that. I figured you'd just leave that path alone and let the Arumvarax sleep, you know. Well, Arumvarax are in the other path that I the right. No, path. that that that's where it's that's where it's tunneling. It's it's housed up over in here. It's a sneaky little Arumvarax. But I didn't want to have that battle just now with everybody like wanting a long rest and all of that. All right, is the party all together? Let's get moving on then. Indeed. Uh, one moment, DM. I need to... My dad and mom are asking me to uh, do some dinner with them because it's a belated Father's Day for my grandfather. Okay. We're we're going to kind of continue on a little bit, but just, no worries. Just just act do my character if you please. Yep. All right. So as you guys exit the cave, Secret and Shadow come out, and, uh, you know, he he said, Thank God you guys, you know, finally came back. I'm freezing my nuts off. And he kind of laughs, and then, and then he gets serious, and he says, Oh, yeah, but no, seriously. And uh, he reveals that, that another... Um, one of the townsfolk has died. We need to find a place to take shelter. They have the townsfolk with them because they couldn't, like, just stay huddled down. A cold uh, winter storm blew in and the wind was getting unbearable, so they came and hid in the entrance of the cave and and have been waiting for you guys to come out and one of them froze to death on the trip
We have to get to the remaining back to shelter. What would it be to look for shelter in the area? Would it be knowledge geography or what? Survival. Survival. All right, I'm going to roll roll for survival and see if there's any areas other than this cave to take shelter in. All right, I'll help you. You want me to make the main roll? You want to do it, Brian? Well, we could both do it, and we could assist each other on it, huh? Looks like I'm assisting you. All right, so as you guys begin to scout around, you see nothing but snow and ice for as far as you can see, but then Ulf all of a sudden has the brilliant idea to have Secret and Shadow dig down into the snow and ice, and sure enough, the snow and ice is thick enough and deep enough that you guys can quickly dig out a a crappy shelter way quicker than building one of the igloos but it'll at least break the wind sounds good to me gonna ask our uh, nutcase if he don't mind doing it he's gone No, he, he's, he's here. Oh, you mean, you mean secret? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah. And Cool Tannen is like, whatever it takes to get out of this cold. He's like, I, I'm a, you know, die hard, you know, like anybody else. And I got this, you know, cold resistance 10, but like the rest of my people are dying. Okay. Um, Eric is going to use his remaining uh, spell slot and attempt to spellcraft the spell camp, uh, Campfire Wall. We could just make a small fire inside the dugout. Well, I suppose that's true. Would it be no, do do the spell. You're you you you're right on. Like this, this is a spell you need to learn, and it's going to be super you know helpful. I will try. Yeah, unfortunately, you know you you just can't get it just right. You're able to craft the fire. And, and all of that, but you can't you can't get the the whole thing to provide the shelter and warmth. Yeah, maybe next time. Maybe. All right, let's get to digging. Yeah, the digging isn't something that you need to like roll for or anything. Um, you guys quickly dig it out with the help of the Gigantean squirrels. And then the squirrels use their tails to kind of like cover up the top as best they can. And because there's so many of you, not everybody can fit underneath the squirrels' fluffy bellies and tails. But as many of you as possible, like get on the dirt and under the squirrels as best you can. Yeah, Scotty and, and even Jalivi like chips in and everybody does it and uh all of a sudden uh Norori uses 
a bit of his elemental magic and he uses shape um, snow and ice and uses that to create a dome over the top of you guys it's a clear ice dome with ventilation so that you guys can see out of it and it keeps the wind out all right nice and cozy quick rest and off again yeah this looks like a good place for a long rest I'll take the first watch with uh, my spell assisting my alertness, and then I'll wake up one of uh, the Vikings unless one of the party members wants to volunteer for it. The squirrels say uh, that they will be on watch and everybody should get some rest. Okay, yeah, so with Scotty and the rest, everybody will be at full. Now, as you guys are resting, who is tossing and turning and can't sleep the whole night through? That'd be me. As you are lying there awake or getting up and trying to, you know, figure out how you're going to fall asleep, you suddenly hear in the distance a faint howling. I'm going to elbow Scotty and uh, tell her to listen. Do you hear it too? And uh, wait for it to happen again and then probably wake everyone the fuck up. Scotty, as you listen, you don't hear anything. You're very tired. Using all of your magic and channeling has, like, exhausted you. So you're sitting up and you're trying to, like, listen, but you don't hear anything and your head begins to get heavy. What? He wakes from, as he sort of is waking, like, with his, while he was sleeping on his Elvion, he sort of wakes and tries to listen to whatever they're talking about. I'm going to start shuffling towards the entrance of this and so I can put my head out and get a good listen for it again. You're standing out there for a while. Narori, you see and hear him get up and walk towards the entrance as Scotty falls back asleep. All right, so as you're waiting, you are not as tired. You're an elemental and used to living on a plane of eternal darkness. So, like, you know, things are a little different. So as you're lying there, you and... uh. Eric hear um, the uh, howling. That sounds like a that's an ominous sound. 
Does it sound like our previous buddies that were chasing us? Well, I mean, as far as they sound like wolves, yes. Does it sound like it's getting closer? It sounds, it sounds very far away and impossible to tell exactly, like, you know. Like, it's echoing off of a vast, empty plain. Uh, how visible is our shelter from the landscape? Probably pretty visible. It's see-through ice. I'm eventually going to take a piss, and then I'm going to make myself somewhat comfortable on the outside while I stand guard, and if they get closer, I'll wake people up. If they stay in a distance, I'll just keep watch. You can, no, tell, can tell you. you can tell that aside from uh, having the um, cold resistance that you would be dead after just minutes of being outside in this. And uh, you said that Eric was woken up by this as well, huh? Yes. Okay, well, uh, now that Eric is awake uh, and he's having trouble going back to sleep, he's going to he's gonna stay outside with Ulf and uh, keep watch with him. And uh, maybe maybe work on crafting some arrows uh, outside with Ulf while we're, while we're keeping watch. We'll eventually need to retreat somewhat into the shelter and uh, as we keep watch from the cold. Uh, do we... We still don't understand each other. Um, god dang it. What, what's your name? Hazard? Your character's name? Norori. Yeah, we still don't understand each other, do we? Norori? Well, I have practiced common in the past. By the way, are we, uh, out of character, are we going to level up from the spider? Um, spider? No. Nope. Okay. You're level hungry. <laughs> I'm going to ask Warrior if he can help keep watching this cold. We're uh, a little fleshy soft. Don't worry. I've had experience in this sort of cold, so I'll, I'll help you. This is warm for you. Yes, but it's sort of similar to my plane, but still warm. Well, I'll break out a game of dice or whatever we have handy to pass the time while we sit and wait. And after a couple of hours, I'll eventually pass off watch and go to s get a little bit of sleep. You and uh, Ulf and Eric play dragon bones against each other in between making arrows and Ulf once again loses his ass to Eric. Eric just laughs as Ulf like tries to trade him some tobacco and coffee for a few more rolls. Then after I lose those, I'm going to get frustrated and tell Eric to cheat Noori, and uh, I'm going to go huff and get warm. And Eric is going to teach Noori how to play Dragon Bones, but he's going to do it all wrong in such a way that uh, it benefits Eric. Noori doesn't really have interest in like games like that, and he just is just concentrated on and I'm, I'm sort of like throwing a snowball like up and down like like he's sort of like slow juggling 
he also makes little ice crystals like you know how young boys will like try to spit a loogie and suck it back in he like makes ice crystals and then like draws them back into his hands and like keeps trying to make a bigger and bigger one without dropping it yeah that's basically what he's doing that is very unnerving somehow Topaz sort of looks over to him and says, what? <laughs> that's... Uh, I've never seen anyone do that. That's just... That's just weird to me. Well, I imagine a lot of things are odd to you, mortal. So... So don't get your head caught up into it. Ooh, I think he just told you to mind your own business. Yeah, he's prideful that way. And we don't hear you, Jellyby. What? I think Jellyby was trying to say something in Discord. Can't hear. It did indeed. The night is never over here. And during the long rest, Derek is going to go ahead and work on memorizing the spell camp firewall. And so let it be written. So what's up, guys? It sounds like they're having audio problems. Oh, no. All right, keep going. Yeah, so what do you guys want to do now that... Uh... You know, it's pretty much getting on to morning. Make coffee and uh, get on up out of here. Yeah, so as you, you know, start to make the coffee, others begin to rise and everybody kind of starts their, their morning.
Sorry. And it's still making those crystals. And he's just made them into like a snowflake design now. It's going to be a quick cup, pass them out. If we need a early morning meeting, they'll take the few minutes it, to drink the coffee that it needs to happen. And then uh, we'll get out up and go where we're going. Shadow Shadow sidles up alongside you and kind of looks down at, at the pot of coffee. I'll offer some to him. He grabs the pot and downs it. Well, I'm not making another pot, so uh, I'm glad I got my cup first. Screw everybody else, right, Shadow? Shadow is starting to go full beavis mode like he's he's twitching and and vibrating from the caffeine hey shadow let me let me tell you a story about uh, where this elemental fellow came from apparently he came out of a, a giant spider's ass he he starts to laugh and like it just turns into this maniacal laughter he is like out of control and has way too much energy. Nori is just squinting angrily at the at the guy and just says, "Didn't come out of a spider's behind, you know." There's apparently a spider that just shat giant crystals in that cave shadow. Too bad you don't fit inside of it, or we, you know, show it to you. And we're just going to keep making this story more elaborate and elaborate. Yeah, and Shadow just is like, you know, spazzing out and and laughing and just rolling on the ground laughing. <laughs> Eric is just grinning from ear to ear. And the guy, and Norori is just sighing as he's just on top of his Eldion's back. All right, who's leading the way? I'm leading, as always. Which way were we going? Hey, you guys answer me when I. Yeah, yeah, that's where yeah, we're, we're going. heading toward the giants, right? Yeah, but like, Coltanen doesn't always like have the best memory or like geographical like sense. He's a great warrior, you know. Not every great warrior is a great leader, and not every great leader is a great warrior. I could draw you a Venn diagram later about it, you know. Uh, just don't show it to Coltan. All right, Jillivy and Scotty, which way? Why aren't you uh, following a star or something? I 
All right, Jalivi, so I want you to go ahead and uh, roll knowledge. Um, do you have astrology or astronomy or? Or the planes, do you have knowledge the planes? Okay, yeah, go ahead and, and uh, use planes. Would Jalivi's natural bloodline come into play here? Yeah, I mean, it's it's why she's, like, you know, getting a role to begin with. I just, you know, I'm trying to find a uh, relevant knowledge ability that, you know, she can roll. Um, but the bloodline is going to, you know, affect the overall uh, ability to even identify the stars like this with a role <laughs> you know normally you would need knowledge astronomy or astrology or whatever and you know probably quite a few ranks to be able to identify everything but her natural bloodline is going to you know cover most of the basics and now she's just you know trying to locate it basically i guess you would say Yeah, so as as you uh, look out into um, the void, you know that some of the stars are actually other planes, um, like the heavens and everything, and you can catch glimpses of them. And um, using that knowledge, you kind of look out and you can see uh what your uh learned people um refer to as uh oh great now i'm not going to be able to remember the name uh Mo Mos muspel helm Mos is that it the uh the fire giant uh realm there's a burning red star that uh, they say is Muspel Helm, and, and you can see it. And uh, you remember that the star that you saw was, you know, to the side of, of that. So you, you look for Muspel Helm, and you find it, and then you locate your star. But you, you, yeah. And as as you uh, do that, though, you watch in horror as the storm clouds move in that had plagued the squirrels when they tried to hide the humans. And the winds pick up and the snow is blowing hard. And it is very hard for the people to continue to march on and walk on. And eventually, secret goes to Eric and says if we don't get these people out of here they're gonna die all right um I can cast campfire wall and set up a shelter um, are we setting up shelter here you can set up a shelter but they're gonna die after that they can't survive up here on their own When you say die, are you talking of cold or starvation or what? Oh, well, of cold first and foremost right now, but starvation is the next step because, like, you know, how much longer are we going to be marching? Like, we don't have that kind of food. Yeah, that should certainly be a thought, too. Um, well, if we set up a 
campfire and keep warm, that'll at least take care of the first part of it, the the coldness. Right, but then what about after that? Well, how far is it to, um, I, I asked you, Livy, how far is it to where we're going? We, nobody knows. All right, well, uh, I'm going to cast Campfire Wall, and then I'm going to roll Survival and see if there's anything around here to eat. All right, uh, and Jalivi, there's like a handful of villagers left right now. So few that the squirrels could carry them back, like they'd be overburdened a little, but they could carry all of the townsfolk back between the two of them. And, uh, Father, Father. go, oh, go ahead. Father, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should send the surviving villagers back with the, with the mighty squirrels. They would have a chance at life that. Actually, that would probably be better than setting up a campfire here. And maybe I should lop their heads off and end their suffering so we can continue on with our mighty squirrel companions. That might be a reasonable option too, Father, as you prefer. Well, rather than lop their heads off, I, I, maybe we should just... Quiet! Let... I'm thinking. Hmm. They don't make good eating, Coltanen. But I do like cutting off heads. You already did that as a sacrifice with your best Viking. Let's not do it to the rest of your people. And while they're ar while they're arguing, I'm getting the campfire wall set up. Okay, so yeah, the campfire wall is in effect, and Cool Tannen kind of forgets about chopping heads off and goes and sits and gets warm. Uh, what about the plan with the whole like getting the villagers out of here before they die? Uh, I think that'd be a good plan, but, uh, well, let's at least get them warmed up first. Scotty, tell your people to prepare to go south. I'm going to ask the squirrels if they can bring them to safety. Oh, yes, yes, we can definitely get them to safety. It is up to my father. I don't know, daughter. I do like cutting off heads, but these are the last of our people. But we do it. Maybe, maybe diplomacy. I suggest. You choose quickly instead of just lollygallying. Hmm. You make an interesting point. Maybe I should just lop your head off and have it be quicker. And at mentioning that, your Eidolon, all of a sudden his right arm forms into more of a shield with a couple of icy spikes jutting out. Element. I suggest you don't. And then he, he, uh, you know, says, yeah, send, send the people back. Try and save their lives. All right, I'm going to break it to the people and help them get ready to travel on uh, two nutballs. Yeah, so Shadow and Secret, you know, make room for everybody to climb on board. And even though they're a little overburdened, they say, you know, don't worry, we'll take our time and get them where they need to go.
And also going to pass on that there may be a cowardly Viking that can take them further south, somewhere further south. But in more exact terms than that. Yeah. You don't want that one, Jalivi. All right, you guys have pointed the star out to me that we're uh, following. Yep. I'm going to start following it. All right. Well, are we ready to move out then? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Cool Tannen is not going to argue. Uh, the squirrels are now, of course, gone. Uh, hopefully they're coming back. Yeah, in a week or three, they're not coming back. So yeah, as you guys continue to march along, it's just snowy field after snowy field, and the light from your light spell is bouncing off of them. You actually have to roll a wisdom save to avoid being snow blinded. Will save. All of us? Yep. Norori, you do not have to roll versus snow blindness. All right, so Kultanen, Jalivi, Eric, you guys have snow blindness. Ulf, you managed to avoid having snow blindness. And Scotty, you need... Oh, no, Scotty, you are immune to snow blindness ever since developing your snowflake irises as well. Arctic druids have... Uh, and Eric is an Arctic druid with Arctic endurance. Would that, oh, uh, that would... yeah, 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 that's right. You're an Arctic druid. So, yep, you're immune to snow blindness as well. So, just Jalivi and Kultanen are snow blind. The rest of you, as you're walking on... Uh, everybody can hear and you guys can see 
three large Arctic aurochs, white furry bulls of immense size uh, up ahead. Hey, you see what I see, yo? Looks like dinner to me. I'm going to motion for the column to stop, and uh, how are our food supplies right now? Well, I mean, you guys are not in, like, immediate danger, but being up north like this, it takes far more calories to keep your body at a constant temperature, so, yeah, you're you're not, like, sitting pretty by any means. So I'd say, like, you know, two to three days. What uh, what is the typical behavior of a of a Arctic auroch? Uh, are, are they skittish? Do they run? I'm gonna roll a knowledge geography to see if knowledge nature. If I can determine what knowledge, knowledge nature. nature. I mean, yeah, yeah, and and the ones that you know of are like um, defensive, but not necessarily aggressive, but highly aggressive when defensive. Okay, so they're not likely to run if we attack them. Right. And in fact, you guys know that these peaceful herbivores rarely go looking for a fight, but will attack with a great show of force anything considered to be a predator when, uh, you know, confronted with, with a threat. What do they eat up here? Mostly moss, lichen, mushrooms. Uh, they will dig up the snow and eat like old grass that's been buried for, you know, decades. Um, you know, whatever, you know, they get their hands on, really. And is it, po is it possible to get within 30 feet? Yeah, you can get within 30 feet of them. They're pretty uh, intent on digging and looking for the mushrooms and whatnot that they're trying to eat. Um, so they're they're not really paying attention. Is there any sheltered spot that we could uh, set up at that they might have trouble getting to us from? Nope, just open plains and snow. Perhaps, uh, perhaps Scotty could put them to sleep, or attempt that. Well, Scotty, you want me to try and f flush them, and you put them to sleep while they're on the run, or you just want to try and put one to sleep? She'll just try it if uh, the one that's within thirty feet from a distance, trying to be very inoffensive, just lull it I... to sleep with a little slumber. Before we do that, I think it'd be a good idea if. Uh... Me and Ulf circle around to the other side and catch them in a pincer uh, in the event that uh, the sleep doesn't work. That's a really good idea. Alrighty. Sounds good to me, and we'll have our ranged weapons with us. So, this is Bruce. I can't see the map at all, but Scotty will try to put one or more to sleep with just one. See how it responds. Maybe it takes it as a threat. Maybe they don't even realize it's a threat. Who knows? Where'd your token go? Don't know. Maybe I accidentally deleted it. It might be further south. I don't know. I can't see the map at all. It went away for a little while. A little while ago, I wasn't even touching it. it. just went dark. Can you see it now? Nope. I see your token here to the left of Coltana. You might need to reload uh, roll 20. Okay, I'll give that a try. But go ahead and, and roll, the, roll the needed piece. Hey, when the stone burst explodes, it makes a pretty loud sound. I'd say... 
equivalent to a firecracker, yeah. That sounds great for spooking them. It does. Well, we can go around to the, the other side of them and uh, fire some stone burst arrows, and uh, if it spooks them and makes them run, it should drive them right into the rest of the party. Um, we don't want that. That's exactly what we want to avoid. They'll crush us. We want to put one to sleep and then scare the others away. Ah. Right. But not towards us. Kind of off to a side. We don't want them to run over our group. How big are these things? I mean, r really big. They're they're like a bull, but on steroids. So like a Brahma bull, but maybe even a little bigger. We're going to take our positions, wait for Scotty to attempt to put one to sleep, and then uh, we'll... I guess I can shoot a whistling arrow to try and scare them off. But... Or I'll try throwing stones first, and then I'll escalate. Uh, Scotty may be able to put more than one to sleep, too, huh? Might work. We shall see. In real life, I once made friends with a uh, Brahma bull named, uh, I think he was Felicio or something. In, he was on a beach in Mexico. This Brahma bull wandered into the camp. He was about a ton. Henceforth, you shall be known as the Bull Whisperer. Yeah, maybe not so much. He was pretty friendly, but I uh, had to be real careful. He was so big. Test, test. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Ditto. And I reloaded and can see the map now. Excellent. Where are these beasts? In which direction? North, east, west. Northwest. Where are they? I do not see them. Right here. I guess from the southeast. And we would be to the west of them if it wasn't the end of the map. This is a good enough spot, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it's all open field, so if you want them more in the middle, I can do that. Yeah, may as well. Well, where did they go? To the our south. All right, so summoning your spiritual shamanistic magic, you use your hex of slumber 
on the auric and now he must make a will save and does not fall asleep and this can affect a creature of any hit dice so yeah but it made its save so it is not asleep she'll quickly try another one unless it charges something all right uh, the next one that you try to hex does, in fact, start to fall asleep. Does the first one realize something is up? I mean, to the barest extent that a dumb animal would. I'm going to... Toss a couple of stones about 10 or so yards away from the Oryx just to try and spook them with the sound. Uh, if we're going to spook them, let's head to the north now. That way we drive them south. I'm going to throw the stones to the north of them. Ah, okay. Does that get any reaction from it? From them? Uh, yeah, so as, you know, basically the stone burst firecracker, you know, goes off, it makes a loud banging, popping sound as the stones shatter, and, uh, th two things happen. The you know, two, the two, minute. the two remaining oryx have to roll their, their defense. Their will saves. One runs. The other one runs. They both begin to run. But now also, the orc who is asleep gets a uh, perception check to be able to uh, wake up. Which he does. Father, let us slay it quickly. And, the, and Father and Scotty will, and the Vikings will all charge it and kill it before it can even get to its feet. Okay. Yeah, I was away. I just... Can we do a charge while it's still prone? Uh, no, because you guys weren't, didn't have a ready to action. So now everybody can roll initiative. I thought two of the Aurochs were running like hell. They are. Ah. Uh, are we waiting on someone? Nope. All right. 
Don't forget to roll for Victor. Ah, uh, yes. So the uh, two arcs that are running have already run off? Yes and no. You can still see them. Yes. Oh. Okay, so they're separated. Um, then uh, the other one, I've already seen that he's starting to wake up. If that's the case, I'm going to take my shot at him. Yes. So I'm going to use one of the uh, stone burst arrows, and then I'll make a move. And I... Did I use... Oh, yeah, okay. Unfortunately, your arrow just ricochets off his woolly hide and does no damage. Alrighty. Any damage from the stone burst? Uh, you gotta roll the stone burst spell. How much is it, Brian? Uh, hang on. Damage. What is the touch AC of the Auroch? It probably touches them, but we need to know how much dice and damage to roll. Nine. It's uh, 3d4. No plus? Uh, no, it's just the stone burst itself is 3d4 plus whatever the weapon damage is. But if the Auroch has a weakness to fire, then uh, it would get a bonus of, what is it, 50%? Because the stone burst is fire damage. Actually, I think I should probably hold my move action. Yeah, let's not uh, go right running to it just yet. That's my turn. Okay, so the stone burst, uh, roll, you rolled a 10 on that? Yep. Although we can take the 4, whatever. Viter stands by Eric's side awaiting a command. All right, uh, Eric is going to tell Vitor uh, just uh, stay, stay, but be ready. This Auroch regains its senses and goes to rejoin its companion. Okay, Eric is going to attempt to let loose the stone burst era. The same one that uh, Ulf struck with the stone burst. I'm not sure which one that is on the map, though. That top one? Okay. Uh, are the Aurochs weak to any... Uh, are they weak to fire by chance? You gotta... Uh, roll your longbow attack.
It wouldn't just be a ranged attack? No, it's a longbow attack. Ah, okay. Well, I don't have a macro for a longbow. Yeah, it's, under, you don't have under, it. it's under attacks. Yeah, I see melee, ranged, alternate range. I don't see a macro for a longbow. Uh, do you not have a longbow? You might I have a sling. All right. Well, I'll just use. I'll just hurl a stone burst. Uh, Rock at, uh, rock at him then. That's fine. You try to throw the stone the distance, but it's it's just too far. Thirty feet. That's way farther than thirty feet. Ah, seventy feet. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to get a little bit closer then. I guess that'll be my turn. As Eric moves up, I'll use my movement to move up with him. This Auroch continues to charge away. Well, the one is kind of trying to defend his comrade, and the other one is kind of angry about uh, being woken up with the stone burst, and even though he was startled, he was like startled in an angry way, so he's kind of threatening a little. Which Oroch was hit by uh, Ulf's Stone Burst arrow? Was it the top one? Yes.
All right, so I have to make a will save. Which I do. The Arctic Aurochs thick woolly fur protects its eyes from your dazzling spray. Cool Tannin is like, oh, okay, so you guys want to kill these things? All right, let's get them, guys. And with that, the Vikings move in. And don't forget he lost 10 health from the from Ulf Sarah. The Viking rushes in and hacks at the Auroch with his battle axe, dropping him to the ground. The last Viking swings his axe so hard that he implants it into the side of the Auroch. He's still up and fighting, but the Viking can't get his axe back out. All right, Scotty wants to put an end to this thing. Yum yum dinner. She runs up to here, and then she jumps up on the corpse of the, the uh, fallen, fallen musk ox, or ox, and from there she stabs at the remaining. Yeah. Here it is. Note that she has a flank with uh, the Viking, and she's above it too, maybe. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you would be rolling with, uh, plus four. Twelve plus another four. Yeah, you slam your spear into the auroch, and as it plunges down into its neck, you can feel its lifeblood seeping out. For 14, it looks like. 
the Orox is like bleeding and mooing, but like it's just a matter of coup de grind it at this point. So, do you... I, I yell at Vitor, go get him, go get him, finish him off. Vitor runs into the injured Oruk, grabs its neck, and begins to shake violently, trying to break it, but he lacks the strength to break the Oruk's neck and instead settles for just squeezing it until he dies. Mm. The other one's long gone. Yeah, the other one just kept charging away. All right, I guess we get to work just butchering them and replacing our food. I'm tight. And we might need a temporary shelter too while we do it. What's that hazard? I was in a different area. If I'm correct. No, you you were here. You uh, your turn order didn't come up, so. Oh, this has to do with family matters. Sorry. It's okay. No worries. Your character didn't even need to take his turn. Killed him. All right. So I guess we should set up camp here, huh? Yeah, and uh, on that note, I think that's a good spot. We're gonna we're gonna set up camp and deal with all of that, and then pick up next session with what happens from here. So, and and just so the scene is laid, uh, we're, I'm gonna cast Camp Firewall again, and uh, we're gonna have the protection of the barrier from it, and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that was, but yeah, so as you uh, cast the campfire wall, you guys enjoy a whole new level of comfort and safety and protection, and um, Coltanen pulls Scotty aside and says, Daughter, it is time that I told you what we're really doing out here. Yes, Father. Tell. There is a gem. A gem that resides on the ring of one of the giants. The primordial first giants that fought the gods. And this... This gem controls all fire. And it gave Surtur and his followers power over the fire. And if I were to gain possession of this gem, I could keep the cold at bay and prevent Ragnarok itself. Because without the cold, Ymir can never return. And without Ymir, Surtur can never get into Ragnarok get into Asgard and cause Ragnarok so we will we will use the fire to contain Ymir and without him Surtur can never come back and Thor will never have to battle your monger and we will save the world that's a brilliant plan father now I understand I knew you had that you had some some clever plan of course daughter I am more than just muscle. My brain is my strongest muscle. You know this isn't true, but, you know. Yeah, but humor the old man. Yeah. Uh, and so, with that, we will close this session. 
and I will see you guys all next time on Dragons of the Frozen Seas. Thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and as always everyone, good gaming.